My name's Kenny Dial, and welcome to Season 2 of the Scuba Diving Podcast. Alexis, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, so you're making a dive app. Yes. Tell me about it. All right, well, it came from the fact that I really wanted to have a place to log my dives and share them with people and add my buddies and have pictures. And there's a million dive logs that, like out there. Right. Um, I'm not creating anything new. I'm taking all the best features of all the apps and putting them into one place. So imagine it as a bit of a LinkedIn and Nike running, but for diving. Uh, I love the Nike Run Club app. Yeah, especially because you can share your runs with people and people can comment on them and like them and you can share them on social media. It would be great if we could do that for diving, to get more people diving. And that's one way uh, that this app can try and garner people more uh, into it. I, you know, I have wanted to see something like this myself. I had a dive shop at one point. I ran trips all the time. We did boats, we did classes, we did all this, dive mastered for people. I know what it's like to try and get tips. I know what it's like to not have cash. You don't bring it onto a dive boat. It's always a thing. Oh, there's an ATM if you go, yeah. You know, it doesn't it. work like that. No. I'm my background is in advertising. I've created apps for Adobe, Volkswagen, Gap, done brand campaigns for Madden. Little name drop. Yes, of yeah. course, Little have flex. to. Um, yeah. My parents were divers. I've been diving since I was a kid. I just took a different career path, but I'm circling back. Take all of those skills, UX, UI design, and apply that to a dive app. Not just to give everyone one place to go, but really to give, especially instructors and dive professionals, a way to market themselves and make themselves more money with something that doesn't cost them more money. They need to be making it, not spending it. Yes. The profile, you can sign up as a recreational diver or professional diver. The profiles slightly differ because professionals can connect to their dive shop or their own. They'll have tipping functions. It'll push to their own social media accounts. This is not meant to be like a find a new following on Buddy. It's meant to help you. It's meant to store your certifications, store your dives, and push it to the platforms that you're already built your following on. We've seen some agencies do this. I've seen it, SSI, Patty Nowy, all of them. And, and there's nothing wrong with those, but the problem is the dive industry is already not the biggest industry out there. And if you're a gung-ho Patty or Nowy guy, you're not gonna go to the SSI and vice versa. So that's not really gonna work for everybody has this on a boat. And that's, so I always, you know, when he first told me, I was, I was a little skeptical and then I came over here and I actually saw it. it scratched me right where I itched and it hit all the right notes, which I haven't seen yet. And so I am your biggest fan right now, hoping that uh, everyone gets on it. it it's going to require everyone to jump on it. Of course, of course. It's brand new, cool. so it'll need users. Of course, we have some brand partnerships. We'll have some featured divers, just like Tom of MySpace, of course, so you don't start with nobody. We need users. We want people to input their dives, not just to share them online. There's a lot that can be done with that data as well. Everyone, at least I hope, who loves to dive is finds conservation important. Right. If we can find out where people are diving, how often they're diving, what are they seeing in those locations? Are they finding trash in those locations? Divers are, uh, they're adaptable people. We want to go diving, but we'd be happy to give a reef a break for a year and dive somewhere two miles away. We can figure that out with that kind of data. There's tons of organizations doing that, but not where all affiliations and all divers are doing it in one place. I, that's what I saw, and it, it covers all the transactions. When you get to a boat, you've got to have your certification. And I saw that you had the card there. And then you got to be able to tip the dive master. You got to be able to have a dive master or instructor sign your dive log. Yes. Um, or you know, uh, endorse it. And uh, and then you want to be able to log it and and then even share it. And then you had some options. I saw like you had all the usual suspects on there: the the temperature, conditions, the weight, the gear, and all that stuff. That was really cool. But I saw something else on there, and I already saw a pretty exhaustive list. You had species, because a lot of people go, "What what was that fish I saw with the you know the." The yes. little unicorn and the unicorn fish. And you know, and it's like they'll see the, the fish and they'll I'll hear the conversation where no one knows. Most people don't have their phones out on a boat or the reception's bad, but you get back and you got it, and that's I think that's just fun. That's just cool. And normally you would just write it down. You might not have a picture of it. And what if I want to look back like a, a month later, you know? It would be nice to see a picture 
of eggs. So I've created my own marine database. So that way when people are adding what they saw, it actually can be visualized in that dive and not just be some words uh, ex like an Excel type sheet. Well, I don't know about you, but um, I, I probably have a, I don't know, three, five, seven hundred logs just in this watch right here. That's not a flex. I'm going to tell you why it's a bad thing. I don't, I haven't ridden a dive log and I know I speak for most divers, you do. most divers, you especially do. if you've been diving, like I don't want to and I don't care. I got the certs. I got the, I don't care. And, and, and but I know I should, but I don't. I don't. If everyone is on this, I think it, it makes it fun, it makes it easy, and it's a it's a platform that truly works. It's not some buggy little bedroom project. We've seen a few of those pop up. Yes, we're, we're two years into the process. Again, we're launching with professionals right now. Anyone who really just loves diving will start pushing out more directed marketing to recreational divers, but we want to make sure that it works for the pros, for the people who dive every day. It's meant to help them. If we can make them more money, we will make money, of course. Well, but the said, intention is to help. Yeah, you, you said something too, uh, and it's got it has to be fluid to have any staying power. Uh, but you said something else that caught my eye when I was thumbing through the app a minute ago. Which is something really cool. You can see what equipment people are wearing. Yes. I get asked a lot. What was that thing you exactly. had, or what, what is what is that? You know, and and it's there. And I thought that was. And you said you can actually link to it if you want. Yes, of course. As a recreational diver, sometimes I'll, I'll go out and I'll see their mask or their fins and I really want that. People are talking about it on the boat. I can just go directly to my instructor's profile, see not just their gear, their Instagram, their dive log, their bucket list, where they've worked, essentially their resume. But if you click on that mask, it'll redirect you to the dive sites website where you can purchase it or to the supplier, depending on what you want. Um, uh, but it is a cool. way to feature different gear, but we'll find out uh, what works when all the professionals are, are on the app. I'm excited, I'm stoked. Where do you see this in five years? It's a very good question. I see this being one of the biggest, uh, we're starting off with it being a dive log app and community, but we're extending next year and including a booking platform that'll connect directly with the app. So in five years, I see Buddy being uh, the number one booking platform solution for all dive shops. I'm on board. What I noticed too, and I think this is a, a, a key ingredient, this doesn't put agencies at odds. This doesn't really put gear manufacturers at odds. This doesn't put dive shops at odds. I think this lifts everybody. That's our mission too. Yes. And it's kind of to eliminate the barriers. Exactly. Because it's a small industry and let's face it, there's some fragmentation that probably isn't helping anybody at this point. And this seems to be something that will transcend that. Yes, I'm hoping that we can turn our small dive club into a much bigger dive club. Because everybody does it, loves it. Everybody does. And if we can get more people that don't dive every day to be interested in diving, the more people that dive, the more people that care about the ocean, yeah. the better that we can do. So yep. I'd it's, really like people to share their love of the ocean. There's no downside to more scuba divers in the water. No. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. All I appreciate right. it. I'm, uh, I'm rooting for you. I'm a fan. Can we do like a quick shot with everybody yes, in please. here? Yes, please. Kimbo, Chappie, come. Yeah. Take a picture. Uh, yes. Makes my arms look good. Thanks for listening or watching if you're on one of the supported video platforms. If you want all things Sweetwater, like a signed copy of my children's book, merch like this shirt or the hat, online courses, or if you want to advertise for your dive facility, if you just want to follow us, go to sweetwaterscuba.com. You can follow my TikTok at Kenny underscore dial, K-E-N-N-Y underscore D-Y-A-L. Our Instagram account, Sweetwater underscore scuba. Of course, the Down to 60 channels on all major platforms and everything else we're doing to lift the underwater world. Thanks for being here and let's show the rest of the world, the rest of the world.